Nike has dominated the shoe game since the early 1980s with their products found in almost every single home. Today, Nike represents 38% of the total shoe market, making it by far the most popular brand. However, recent data shows a concerning trend. Nike sales have been plummeting and their stock price has fallen about 60% from its peak. Meanwhile, newer brands like Hoka and On Running are gaining popularity. This raises some interesting questions. Is Nike starting to lose their position as the most popular brand? And why are their sales starting to drop? In this video, I'm going to go through all the data and I'm going to explain how things got so messy with Nike and I'm going to do this in a quick and concise manner. The story starts when the new CEO, John Danahoe, was appointed the new CEO in January of 2020. This new CEO was a bit of a strange pick for Nike as John has never worked in fashion or in sportswear but instead had worked with technology-based businesses such as eBay and software companies like ServiceNow. With this new CEO, the business model of Nike has drastically changed. Over the last 60 years or so, Nike's business model has been to design the products, hire contract manufacturers to make the product, and then sell them at their own stores or with wholesalers. But as times are changing and the new CEO's background is in tech, specifically working with eBay, the business model has moved more towards e-commerce. Nike has developed four different apps to try pushing this new digital strategy of selling their products. One is Nike Shoes, Apparel and Stories. The second is Nike Sneakers. The third is Nike Run Club. And the fourth is Nike Training Club. This push into the digital strategy is not necessarily a bad idea because out of the three ways of selling products, this has the highest profit margins, mainly because wholesalers aren't taking a cut from the products that are being sold. And they also don't have to deal with staffing and location costs and everything else that comes with running a brick and mortar business. Business. So the more people that are buying their products through their digital systems rather than you know going through wholesalers or going to their stores, the higher their profit margins are. But here's where things get messy because only three months after the new CEO came in and started pushing for this new digital strategy, we had the lockdowns begin. And as everyone now knows, everyone was stuck at home. So the digital strategy was actually a huge success. Their revenue jumped from 39 billion to 46 billion and profits grew from 4 billion to 6 billion. And during this time, their stock price shot up over 80%. What also fueled this surge was at the time, people were being given out stimulus checks, so people had extra money, and when they actually did go out and buy Nike you know, products, Nike saw higher profits because it was through their digital system. Another factor that drove the growth was during this time, the resale market was also exploding and people were making a lot of money flipping shoes. There was one story of a 17-year-old who made $200,000 selling sneakers that year. All of this was creating even more hype for their new limited editions that they were releasing. So on face value, this new digital system was a huge success. And the CEO said in an interview that he believed that this new trend of buying products on the digital system was going to become a permanent way that consumers would buy products even after the lockdowns. And because he believed so strongly in this new way of selling and that this was the way that they were going to do business going forward, Nike cut ties with a lot of wholesalers and only kept connections with a few companies. The problem was when the world opened back up, people just went back to buying things in store and now they had less relationships with wholesalers and not only that, they were seeing lower margins as they were when they were selling things online. From all this, Nike is now reversing a lot of what they did during the lockdowns and re-establishing relationships with the wholesalers that they cut ties with. Nike's latest quarterly report highlighted that the company is actually struggling and they're doing much worse than they had anticipated. For the fourth quarter of fiscal 2024, which ended on May 31st, Nike's revenue dipped 2% year over year and they missed analyst expectations by $250 million. The shift in consumers on where they're buying Nike products has only been part of the problem. Another big problem is that the resale market has gotten much worse. During the peak of the resale bubble, Air Jordans were selling well over double retail price in the secondary market. But Nike took notice of this and started increasing the prices and increasing the number of limited edition shoes they had out, which just saturated the market. During the boom time, Nike ordered a record number of inventory and because of the lockdowns, they were seeing a delay in production, so they ordered even more to meet demand, but they overshot and they were left with the highest inventory in history, which resulted in shareholders becoming concerned about the demand and gave them a lot of product that just sat there not selling. 
So they ended up selling a lot of their products via discounts. Even now, retailers are still slashing prices on more Nike sneakers at a rate that's nearly double of two years ago. There's also been a lack of innovation from Nike and that's mainly because they've become so focused on the secondary market and releasing special, you know, limited edition shoes that they forgot to focus on the people that just wanted good running shoes. This has led competitors to start stealing market share from them such as Hoka and On Running which over the last few years have seen a massive surge in popularity. Over the last five years, these two companies have grown their sales by around 800%. Obviously, these companies are nowhere near Nike, but some people argue that this, you know, shows a sign that Nike is starting to lose its dominance. Looking forward, the CEO has admitted flaws with the company and he said, We need to sharpen our focus on sport. We must drive a continuous flow of our new product innovation. Our brand marketing must become bolder and more distinctive. And while Nike Direct will continue to play a crucial role, we must lean in with our wholesale partners to evaluate our brand and grow the total marketplace. The management team have come to realize that they need these wholesale partners in order to remain strong and it goes a long way when the CEO acknowledges that there are problems that have been made and that he's actually working on fixing them. It's going to go a long way in getting their sales trending in the right direction. Not only that, when you look at Nike's business model, a big reason to why they stay relevant is because they spend $6 billion annually on sponsorships, paying athletes across the world to wear the merchandise and creating partnerships with sports and people. This one thing makes it hard for competitors to try to steal market share from them and it keeps Nike relevant. Because when people see their favorite sportsman is wearing the brand, it subconsciously links the product with being either professional or cool. Overall, Nike still seems to be dominating the market and even when it comes to their digital sales, that's still trending up in the right direction. And when looking at Nike's revenue broken into segments, there's three main categories that make up their total revenue. Shoes represent 68%, apparel being 28% and equipment representing 4%. So shoes are a main factor, but they still bring in a lot through their other sources. But what do you think? Is Nike losing dominance or is it just a bad year? Let me know in the comments and that's it for this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. See you later.